Hi guys, and welcome back to Latin Nation. I'm really excited to have our guest here today. He's the chief strategist for Spokio.com. Welcome, Emmanuel Pleitas. Thank you, Gabby. He's also a good friend of mine. Um, so you have described Spokio as basically the Google for people. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your company and your role in it. Well, uh, I'll start with saying that about a third of searches online on Google or other search engines are actually for people, people related. So uh, what we have done is actually done a kind of social media aggregation with the white pages, put it together to create a people search engine where everyday Americans are searching for folks online. And I'm the chief strategist, so I've come in with a background from you know policy, economics, general business, and finance to think of how we will continue to grow and become a more mature technology company that's much broader than just you know a people search engine in the future. Now. I'm trying to be a public person, right? I'm hosting a show, but there's a lot of things that I want to keep private. And some of the things that I want to keep private is how to be tracked down by any random person. So mm -hmm. when I went on Spokio, I was mm -hmm. actually concerned uh -huh. with the fact that every place that I've ever lived in, mm -hmm. in Miami, in Los Angeles, you can mm -hmm. find a map too. Um, there's even some people that look themselves up and find personality traits. So mm -hmm. um, is, is this just, have we just opened the Pandora's box? Mm -hmm. Are we in the age of there's just no more privacy mm -hmm. and this is the way it's going to be from now on? Yeah. So I want to stop short of saying there's no more privacy. There still is privacy. Uh, and any company that works with data about people needs to be conscious about privacy. But we are moving towards an age where data continues to grow more and more. Now, what I would say is that from, from our job at Spokia is we want to make sure that there's a huge education piece so that people need to realize that all this data that, that we have and we have online has existed for a very long time. This has been something that the, that the US has always had. Now, anyone, any, any major company already has that data. Anyone, if they really wanted to track you down, already has that data. So what we need to do is make sure that we're educated and we know that the data exists, and then move towards more services that allow you to control and put stuff that you want online and put stuff that you don't want offline, right? But it's a huge process, and this country right now is moving super fast, and there's been a number of things that happened in the last couple of weeks that we can uh, talk about, but it's, it is a, a hot button issue, and I'm excited that, that I'm the chief strategist of a company that is right in the middle of this, mm -hmm. and there's, there's opinions on both sides, but at the end of the day, with technology and an increasing amount of data, we are moving towards a more public state. And God forbid you try to search someone on Facebook and they don't have a Facebook profile or a long lost relative, you can go to Spokio mm -hmm. and you can pretty much find yeah. anybody. And actually on, on, on that point, uh, our, our, our origination was actually a, a social network aggregator. Mm. It was meant because it was a proliferation of social networks, not just Facebook. Facebook actually wasn't that popular yet. It was mm -hmm. Facebook, there's Friendster, MySpace. Uh, we actually, um, that's where the real technology has come in, where we actually have track over 90 different social networks, where, from dating sites to the Facebooks of the world. Can't forget the dating sites. <laughs> right. You guys started back in 06? In 2006, exactly. 2006. For the first four years, all we were was a social network aggregator. It was the public profiles online of a bunch of social well, networks. You know, I'm curious about, about something. Um, you know, I, I always have like a, a conspiracy theory. You know, I'm one of those guys, um, but I, I don't always buy it. But I'm curious as to the government's uh, mm -hmm. role in some of these websites, everything from Facebook to Spokio. Um, a lot of people are concerned in person-to-person -person invasion of privacy, mm -hmm. but how is the government involved? Are they supporting, yeah. you know, Spokio? Do they uh, use it as a resource? No, great, great question. And another one of these, you know, big debates out there, right? I think that popular opinion has never wanted the government to be able to intrude on anyone's privacy. However, the government has always figured out ways to do it. In this case, this is actually, if you think about it, a democratiz democratization of data so that everyday people can actually do mm -hmm. what the government has always been able to do and understand what's possible, right? You know, there's, there's, a, there's a huge um, opportunity for us to not just become a more public society, mm -hmm. but to allow us to be more transparent and to connect who we want to connect with. Wow, this is an interesting conversation, yeah. very informative. <laughs> I've already learned so much, and we're gonna have more with Emmanuel Pleitis here on Latin Nation. Stay tuned.